Today we're looking at World War I, Year 3, 1916. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. By January of 1916, World War I had already been raging for close to a year and a half, starting in the summer of 1914. As the year 1916 began, both sides, Allied and Central Powers, who had expected quick victory at the beginning of the war, had suffered terrible losses with new technologies being introduced into warfare in 1915 with chemical weapons, submarine warfare, and air bombings. At the beginning of 1916, Britain passed the Military Service Act, which stated that all fit males of military age were eligible to be called up for active service without volunteering to fight. The law took effect in late May. In late February of 1916 on the Western Front, the Battle of Verdun began, which would be a battle that would last for the next 10 months. German forces launched a massive offensive to capture the French city of Verdun in northeastern France. Much of the fighting focused along the Meuse River as German forces tried to push closer to the city, but French defenders put up a stiff resistance. A 20-mile long front of fighting developed as the battle continued through the spring and summer. By the end of fighting near Verdun in December of 1916, over 700,000 German and French forces would be killed in combat. In March of 1916, in an effort to relieve pressure on Verdun and force German forces to divert their attention, Russian forces mounted a major offensive on the Eastern Front, but German troops were able to easily defeat the offensive in the Vilna and Lake Narosh regions. In April, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson threatened to cut off diplomatic ties with Germany after again a German U-boat sunk a passenger vessel, the Sussex, killing 80 and injuring two Americans. Germany signed the Sussex Pledge, promising to give warning to passenger vessels before firing on them. In mid-May, Austro-Hungarian forces began to push into and attack Italian forces that had just recently joined the war on the Allied side. Although Austria-Hungary achieved early success, the logistics of trying to supply their troops in the difficult mountain terrain, combined with a strong counterattack by Italian forces, caused the campaign to come to a halt. On May 31st, the Sea Battle of Jutland takes place in the North Sea, as German vessels sought to break the British naval blockade of German ports. There's a massive exchange of fire with 14 British vessels being sunk and 11 German vessels being lost. In the end, the German Navy withdrew and the British blockade remained intact for the remainder of the war. In early June, on the Eastern Front, Russian forces again organized an offensive to displace Austro-Hungarian troops. German forces had to withdraw 20 divisions from Verdun to help fight off the Russian push. On June 24th, the Battle of Somme begins, as over the next week, the Allied forces fired over 1.5 million artillery shells into German trenches to weaken their defenses to prepare for a large British and French combined attack. On July 1st, the British suffered the largest loss of life in the history of the British military, with over 18,000 British troops being killed as the assault on at Somme begins. Simultaneously, at Verdun, German forces began to use chemical weapons in an effort to dislodge French defenders, but the French hold their ground. In late August, Italy officially declared war on Germany, which now stretched German resources thinner, as now they had another enemy to defend against. On September 15th, the first tank to be used in combat, the British Mark I, goes into action at the Battle of Somme. On the Eastern Front, the Russian offensive that had begun in June grinded to a halt and the Russians withdraw having suffered close to a million casualties, killed, wounded, or missing. The Russian troops march back demoralized by not breaking the central power lines. Shortly after, in late October of 1916, French forces organized an offensive at the Battle of Verdun and are able to reach take ground that was lost to the Germans throughout the battle. Then on November 18th, the first snowfall fell at the Battle of Somme. French and British forces, weary from fighting since July, abandon their offensive and fall back, gaining little in the battle. Likewise, on December 15th, 
The French launch their final offensive at Verdun. German troops withdraw and the Battle of Verdun, which had begun in February, came to an end, gaining nothing for either side. 1916 had been a hard-fought year with both sides hoping to make a breakthrough and find victory. But the year ended with both Allied and Central Power forces basically in the same place they had began the year, but now with hundreds of thousands of more casualties. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.